Let's go down here to verse 25. Whereof I made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. Even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is what? Christ in you, the hope of glory. Praise God. All right, now, we're, we're stepping into something now. We've, as a matter of fact, we've stepped into it. And this is the, the time of the vengeance of the Lord. It's the time, what we call the latter rain. The latter rain. And so, if you go with me to Isaiah 61, please. I'm going to read, and this is what Jesus read in the synagogue as he got up to read. He said, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he, the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek. Uh, and he has sent me to heal, uh, pardon me, to bind up the brokenhearted and to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, oil of joy for mourning, and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Wow, lot, there is a lot in that, folks. All right, the first part of that, as you know, Jesus got up to preach in the synagogue. He said, the spirit of the Lord is God is upon me in Luke chapter four and verse 16, uh, verse 18, pardon me. Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, so forth. Well, Jesus was reading from Isaiah 61. And then he got to verse two, go to verse, uh, no, 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 no. Go back to Isaiah 61, verse two. And if you look at Isaiah 61, verse two, he says, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And then Jesus stopped. Then it says, and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn. All right. Let's look at first this word vengeance, which has nothing to do with revenge, which is some people think. But it basically is the um, it is God's punishing offenders uh, and it proceeds from a love of justice. And it's not some emotional retaliation or anything like that. It's the justice system of God. I want you to get that. Because God is not, he, it's not revenge with him. Revenge is a low life principle. It is not high life. High life, the Bible says, pray for those who despitefully use you and say all manner of things against you falsely. It says pray for them. And that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to pray for them. Are you with me here? No. You, many times, because God's people haven't known vengeance, we have been victims. All right? I, I want to show you how, how vengeance looks, because vengeance goes together with recompense. Over in Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 30, he says, For we know him that had said, Vengeance belongeth to me, and I will recompense, saith the Lord, and again the Lord shall judge his people. All right? And over in um, uh, Isaiah chapter, I think it's 30, 32. Oh, over in Isaiah chapter 30, yeah, 32 and verse 34 and verse 8, he said, For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance and the year of recompenses for the controversy of Zion. Now, that's a prophetic word speaking about the church. Now, just stay with me now because it's going to make sense in just a minute. So the point that I want you to see 
is that when now vengeance comes in, vengeance, that part Jesus didn't read because that part didn't apply to Jesus' ministry. It stopped at to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and he closed the book and sat down. Now, then this season, which Joel talked about, he talked about in Joel chapter two and verse 23, be glad then you children of Zion, rejoice in the Lord your God who hath given you the former rain moderately and he'll call to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. So he's saying about rain. What is the rain symbolizing? It's symbolizing the anointing that you're sh shifting into another aspect of the anointing. That this first rain was for the gathering in of the church, which you saw in the book of Acts. The next is for the beautifying of the church, the latter rain. This is for those who mourn are going to be rejoicing. This of those who were being harassed and so forth, you're going to be made comfortable. See, this is the anointing that is now come on the church. Now this, this is powerful because, um, this, this anointing, uh, has with it a protection aspect. Let me just make sure I follow my notes here. If you go out down, uh, to John chapter 14, please. And look at John chapter 14 and verse 13. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, I'll get, I'll do that the father may be glorified in the son. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pay, pray the Father, and he shall send you a, another, what? Comforter, that he may, what? Abide with you, how long, how long? Forever. All right. Now, this anointing, that God is now releasing on the church. Remember what he said in verse 28 of Joel chapter two, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon how much? All, all flesh. Okay. So he's going to pour it out upon all flesh. Now <clears throat> I want to cover just a couple more things that I did in that early service. Cause I want to make sure that you get this now. <clears throat> The, y'all bear with me. Can you, can you bear with me here? I, I want to make sure that I get this to you. So God is sending us places that we are going and our assignment is to establish his kingdom wherever we go. The Bible talks about Romans chapter 14. It talks about the kingdom of God. It says that the kingdom of God is not in meat and drink, but in righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Are you with me? So he is saying here that God wants you and me to bring heaven to earth because we are his ambassadors. Am I right? And he's sending us into places that we are to bring under kingdom jurisdiction. Oh Lord, have mercy. Y'all with me here. If you recall, <clears throat> Pilate and Herod, that's right in the Gospels, but they were debating which one of them was going to have pronounced sentence over Jesus. And one of them discovered, no, he's a Galilean. He should be over there in that jurisdiction. But it uses the word jurisdiction. And jurisdiction says this 
is my jurisdiction. It's usually some kind of, 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 of geographic uh, land mass. And it has to do with air rights and everything. You fly airplanes, you come into a, a airport in a city and you don't know it, but there are layers of jurisdiction. There, there's a jurisdiction that goes from the earth to 5,000 feet that the airport owns. And then there's a the next jurisdiction which the state owns, so maybe. Or in the next generation, uh, go all the way up to 23, or uh, the PCA, 23,000 feet or whatever. Now, I'm saying <clears throat> that remember when Jesus was casting demons out of that man who had legion. He said, don't send us out of this country. See, because demons are assigned certain jurisdictions. They're assigned certain places. Are y'all with me here? And here is, look, here's a working example. So God, when we first came to Chicago, we came here with how much? $200. Okay, I just tried to see if y'all with me here. But I go down to a meeting that I was invited to speak at. I didn't have anywhere else to speak. And they invited me down there. And when I spoke, God said, okay, heal the sick. And miracles broke out. And the person said, God said, turn this ministry over to you. Well, it was about 15 people with no bank accounts. And I said, okay, let me pray about this. Okay. But anyway, now I'm not talking about anybody, but I'm just saying it, it, it was hard going. And God said, take it. Now why? Why? Because that was my assignment. But understand, I'm walking in there with diplomatic immunity. You, you got what I'm saying? I'm walking in there because nothing can touch me. Come on now. Look at, look at Psalm 105 and verse 13. Just, just look at that real quick. All right. He said this. When they went from one nation to another and from one kingdom to another people, he suffered no man to do them wrong. Yea, he reproved kings for their sakes. Saying what? Touch not, come on, my anointed, and what else? Do my prophet no harm. So they can't touch me. Why? Because I'm under an order of protection. I'm under divine protection from heaven that's going to take care of me. Psalm 91, verse 10, please. In Psalm 91, verse 10, he says, There shall no evil befall me, neither shall any plague come nigh my dwelling. Watch this. For he shall give his angels charge over me to keep me, how many? In all my ways. See, see, I'm going down there with this as my covenant heritage. See? See, I'm more conscious of this than I am of something bothering me. Isaiah 54, 17. This is, this is God's vengeance now. I'm, I'm talking about this. No weapon that is what? Formed against me shall prosper. Keep going. Every tongue that shall rise against me in what? Judgment. Come on. Thou shalt condemn. What? This is a what? Heritage of the servants of the Lord. And my righteousness is of, of me, say the Lord. Thy righteousness. Y'all with me? So notice, no weapon formed against me shall prosper and every tongue. See, because he knows witches are going to try to send out curses. He, he knows that. But God got me covered. But he said over in Acts 16 that he's, he will save me and my house. 
see, that's all of my immediate relatives. That's, that's my children. Come on. That's my grandkids. See, he going to save all of them. So the, Satan is like the mafia. He'll try to go after your family. But he can't touch them. And I'm going to show you that in the book. Now, because people of God have not known vengeance, they've been victims. Because none of this works except by faith. I'm going to still talk about my story. Don't go into Lake and Blackman. Look at Romans chapter 10, verse 11. Romans 10 and 11. For this scripture says, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Let's look at that in another translation. Just see what it says. And watch this. If you believe on him. The scripture says, No man who believes in him, who adheres to, relies on, and trusts in him, will ever be what? Put to shame or what? Be disappointed. See, he'll give you his word, but you got to what? You got to believe it. Look at the next verse. No one, for there is no distinction between the Jew and the Greek. Between the black and the white. Come on, African American saints. See, because somehow, I'm not going into it. The same Lord is Lord over how many? All of us. And he generously, come on, bestows his riches upon all who what? Call upon him how? How? In faith. In faith. Oh, what I'm reading right now won't happen to you if you're not doing it in faith. And faith comes how? So they got to hear it. How can they hear without a who? Without a preacher. And I've been sent. I've been sent to tell you that your days are being harassed. Oh. So I go down there, down, down over to Lake Pulaski, and take that, you know, and a lady comes in one day. We have a little prayer meeting, you know, little, very little. And the lady comes in, kind of aggressively comes to the door and says, where's the pastor? I said, I'm the pastor. Well, I need to see you. I said, you see me now, lady. You know, you had to be tough right, right down in there where I come from. Boy, that's Dodge City. You know, you got to be ready. <clears throat> I said, you see me now, lady. I said, what do you want? She said, I, um, I, the drug dealers have taken on my block. They come out at 12 noon every day and leave at 12 midnight. We can't go to, children can't play. Neighbors are terrorized. What are you going to do about it? Well, she came to the right place. Because that's my jurisdiction. Come on, you got, you got to see what I'm saying, man. No devil can come in your house. That's your jurisdiction, man. So what happens? Woo, well, I'm getting revelation as I'm talking to you up here. Woo, hey, baby, shit talk. Ah, so what happens? I said, get in this circle, let's pray. Pray, pray some in the spirit. Bible says, if you don't know what to pray for, pray in the Holy Ghost. Then ask for interpretation, boom. Interpretation came back to me. He said, take this bottle of oil. He said, take it. Give it to her, bless it, give it to her and tell her to pour it down the middle of the street. Now that's all God told me. I said, that's all he told me. But I trust in the Lord with all my heart. See, I'm not going to try to find a reason why I can't do this. Well, she might not like what I say. So what? Here's the bottle, take it. If you want them out, take, do what I said do. Bible says his commandments are not grievous. He didn't tell me to run from there downtown. He told me to just give it a bottle of oil. So she got the oil, went and poured it down the middle of the street, came back in three or four days, came in the door with a big smile on her face. Pastor, guess what? Well, I know what because the word won't return void, but it shall prosper in the thing that it said. Isaiah 55, 11. So it, it worked. And if you believe him, you will not be ashamed. 
Say amen. If you believe what I'm talking right now, you will not be ashamed. I said this is the time of the latter rain and God is about to beautify the church. What happened? She said they came out and they came out there and stayed next day one hour and left and never came back. Now I'll invite you to, to Isaiah chapter 32 and verse 17. Watch this. And the work of righteousness shall be peace. And the effect of righteousness, oh, here's another check too. Somebody gave me another check. And the effect of righteousness, quietness and assurance forever. I'm not done yet. My people shall dwell where? In peaceable habitation. Come on, in sure dwellings and in quiet, come on, resting place. Listen, he didn't say you're going to dwell where they're shooting every day. Now, I'm talking about you can shut down the shooting. See, you, you, you got jurisdiction over some of this. But God will allow what you'll allow. I'm telling you, we about to go somewhere now, saints. Now, what has been happening? All kinds of forces have been resisting us that have been assigned by Satan to work against us and we haven't known it. That they have been working through spiritual forces using people to gain advantage over us. But now is the time of vengeance. It's the time that another comforter has come. Now what you can't do is look back at Job and say, look what Job went through. Well, Job didn't have what you have. Come on, somebody. I said, Job did not have what you have. You, the Bible says in Romans chapter 8 and verse 33. Lord have mercy. Verse 34. I'm cutting down some time here. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather, that is risen again. Who is even where? At the right hand of who? God. What is he doing? Making intercession. Come on, for us. Now, wait a minute. He's checking out his body. And a body in Chicago is in trouble. He take a body in Berlin. Germany and say pray. They don't know what to pray for so they'll pray in the Holy Ghost. But when they pray God hears their prayer. Because the Bible says he that prays in the spirit prays not unto men but unto God. So as you pray they pray to God. God hears their prayer in Berlin and answers that prayer here in Chicago and sets you free. Job did not have an intercessor. That's one of the biggest differences between the Old Testament and the New. And if somebody preaches only old, then you have no faith for the intercessor. And it doesn't automatically happen. Are you with me here? Jesus sees what we're going through, but he needs you because the authority of getting you delivered must come from the earth. Boy, I'm preaching better than you saying amen. 
So all these forces the enemy is trying to use to stop you. Now, the Bible says God is comforting Zion. I said comforting Zion. Now, I want you to see how this works. Because the Holy Ghost, number one job, one man said, in these last days, is to execute vengeance upon all the enemies of God's people and nothing shall escape him. So, anything that is harassing you, anything, Lord have mercy. <laughs> uh, folks, I, I, listen, this, this stuff is, this is strong stuff. You can't, you can't, Lord have mercy. All right, now, now watch this, watch this. Oil. I gave that lady the oil, didn't I? That oil brought her comfort. Am I right about that? All right, Psalm 92 and verse 10. And 92 and verse 10 <laughs> says this. <clears throat> But my horn shall thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn. I shall be what? Anointed, come on, with fresh oil. I said fresh oil. Now, God is the, I know. Can I get it out? Yeah. The, the one, one of the major things that fresh oil is going to do is bring restoration. Yeah. Say amen to that. Yeah. Now, Joel said in Joel chapter two, he said, and I will restore the years. You remember when he said that? Now, all this is because of the rain, the anointing. Now, that's why I say you got to keep up with me because I don't want to get too complicated here. I want you to hear this. So if, if you remember, there was a woman and she had an issue of blood. Remember that? Well, Jesus, the anointing flowed on this woman. And as a result of that, Jesus didn't say she was healed. But Mark chapter 5, verse 34. He's, he didn't use the word heal. He said to her daughter, <clears throat> help me. Thy faith, come on, has made you whole. Now, when I say whole, I mean no trace that you have been through what you have been through. Let me say it another way. You don't look like what you been through. I, are you with me here? See, I'm, I'm, I'm saying that this anointing in the last day, God is going to erase all the trace of what has troubled you. He, he, he is going to take you and make it so that there is no sign, no trace that you have been treated the way you've been treated. Oh, Jesus. I'm talking about this one guy called and he said, I'm going to send you a, 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 a video of me when I testified about this. But he said, I had bad credit. And he said, I went to this lady and she asked me to do something with her and I helped her move and so forth. He said, I saw a scripture on her desk. And I said, what is that? She said, I used that to fix my credit. And he said, let me see that scripture. And it came out of Colossians chapter 2 and verse 14. And in Colossians chapter 2 and verse 14, he says here, 
blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way and nailed it to the cross. Well, you know what that means. That's in the old Jewish custom at that time, back in Jesus' day, that when the debt is paid, they will take the note that the debt was on and nail it to the front of the business so everybody could see that this is a good business person here. They pay their debts. Well, what Jesus was is nailed to the cross. And, and when he got nailed to your cross, your debts were canceled. They, they, the, the, so it's unjust for the unjust judge to hold you in that kind of situation because God says, I'm going to make you so that you don't look like what you've been through. And he said, he took that scripture and started confessing it. And then one day the Lord spoke to him and said, what do you want your credit to be? He said, I want it to be 700 and whatever, 25, whatever. And he said, my credit went up to 725. He said, I went to the God and he said, I said, now check it again. Are you sure that's me? He checked. He said, my credit. He said, and then something happened about six months later. Credit fell again. He said, I got this word again. Pumped it right on up there. He said, my friend told me, no, they won't change your credit rating for another six months. He said, they changed that thing within 30 days. He said, see, you, it's your jurisdiction. Don't let the devil tell you how to act in this, in this. I'm saying now, he's going to race to shame with the rain. that. And I'm saying everything that the enemy has used and has made you look like what you look like, you're not going to look like that anymore. And I'm telling you, you go in this Bible and see anybody. You see the lepers that cried out to Jesus. And son of David, have mercy on us. He said, go show yourself to the priest. The Bible says, as they went, come on, they were healed. And that one came back and he was a Samaritan and he came back and glorified God. And Jesus said, thy faith, what? Has made you whole. Uh, it's not only that, you can go in the book of Daniel and you'll see that the three Hebrews, they were threatened because they wouldn't bow down to this old pagan God and these ungodly laws that had been established. And they stood on the word of God. The Bible says he threw three of them in there, tied up. He said, when the king looked, he said, wait a minute, didn't we throw three? He said, I see four, and the fourth one looks like the son of man, son of God. I'm here to tell you now that they may throw you in there, but you coming out. And you're not going to look like what you did look like before it happened. You are not going to look like what you've been through. God is erasing the shame. Come on. He's untying you from everything. No longer will them bills sit in that house for 60 days. They're going to sit in your house for 60 minutes. Long enough for you to write out a check. Because you're going to be the lender. Come on. You are under the latter rain. It's washing away shame. Now, come on over to one more place because I can go over and over there because God is about to do some things now that have not been done before. So don't you think your situation is so special? Say amen to this. So here is over in Genesis chapter 20. And this is when, this is when here's Abraham and he's going by down in this country of the Philistines and Abimelech grabbed hold to his wife. And look at verse three. But God came to Abimelech in a dream and he said to him, behold, you but a dead man for the woman that you have is what? She's another man's wife. Now Abimelech 
and grab this other man's woman. Are you with me? But I got news for you. The Holy Ghost. Not just angels going to protect you, but the Holy Ghost. And that's why he wants you to get a good relationship with him. That's why I read over in 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and, uh, and verse 14. That's why I read that scripture because he was saying here that he won. Look at the scripture, what it says. The grace of the Lord, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. What? Amen. And I told you, grace means God's willingness to use his power on your behalf, even though you don't deserve it. Say amen to that. And the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost. We said that communion word is the same word we get partnership, a kononia. It's a closeness. The Holy Spirit, this verse is saying this. Hey, let me have more responsibility for your life. See, if you believe that, he'll take more responsibility for it. Paul said, I sought the Lord three times to take this thing from me. And God said to this to me, my grace is sufficient for you. Are you following what I'm saying? So God, Paul had to learn to let the Holy Ghost take more responsibility. And I'm saying you need to learn the same thing. He can take more responsibility for your, for your situation, for your business, for your kids. I'm saying the Holy Ghost wants to do something. Because when Jesus left, the Holy Ghost came. And now this ministry of Christ is fully in the hands of the Holy Ghost. That's why we need to get a, a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Because he's the one now that's going to make things happen for your life. Say amen. So Paul went through all kinds of things. Paul went through in 2 Corinthians chapter 11. He went through shipwreck. He went through beatings. They stoned him. One time left him for dead. Watch this. Took rods and beat his feet because they broke your bones. But somehow he kept walking around because this is what he said. None of these things move me. Look what he said about his affliction It's found over here in second Corinthians chapter four and verse uh, 17. Look what he says here. He said for our light afflictions, which is but for a moment light afflictions, they have beat you and left you for dead. You call that light. Come on, they have whipped you with 39 stripes and you call that light? Paul said, none of these things move me. Why? Because he understood Romans chapter 8 verse 11. If the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead is dwelling in you, he is going to repair your mortal body by his spirit. Can't y'all see this? So here is Abraham. The man has grabbed Abraham's wife. Now, can I tell you the truth? I don't believe he grabbed her just because she looked good. I believe he grabbed her because Satan is using all kinds of forces to try to keep you from your destiny. And I believe that Satan, the same thing he did with Eve, he's trying to do with this woman. He's trying to grab this woman and he's trying to cut off that divine seed that's going through the generations and trying to cut it off with Abraham. But God comes to Abimelech in a dream. Say you are but a dead man. And you've got another man's wife. I'm telling you, God will look out for your kinfolk. So whatever's been tampering with your destiny, whatever's been afflicting you, whatever's been humiliating you, whatever's been causing you to delay, whatever's been causing you to, to, to be hung up, to be frustrated and so forth, whatever has been coming against your peace and your progress, your joy, your career, your business, your family, God is about to deal with them starting right now. Do you believe that? 
telling you, we are in the time of the greater works. We are in the time where God's going to get this job done, folks. It's not going to be a maybe, but it's going to be that the church going to be the most attractive thing in the world. I have mean talk about the money that's about to be converted over into the church. Because it does not belong to the devil. And the only reason he's got it, because God's people have known the vengeance of the Lord. This is it. Whatever you've been going through, you'll go through it no more. I said, whatever you've been going through, you're going through it no more. And whatever's been harassing you, this is the last day you're going to be harassed. And them bills ain't going to stay in your house no 30 days. From now on, I declare those bills paid in the name of Jesus. Say amen to that. You are not anointed to pay bills. You are anointed to preach the gospel to get the sick healed and the lame walking. Say amen now. You are anointed to be a leader in your community. I said you are anointed for business success. I'm not talking about success that takes 10 years. I'm talking about success that takes 10 days. like the world you got the mind of Christ so I'm saying right now the oil is flowing I said the oil is flowing Lord have mercy the oil is flowing I said the oil is flowing come on come on the oil is flowing I'm talking about money is going to come healing going to manifest joy is going to be without your family gonna be like you on vacation ah! now give God some praise and a thanksgiving one more Exodus chapter 14 just one more verse this is where you're going now he told Moses you're not going to have to fight this. Stand still. The Lord shall fight for you. And now I want you to just hold your peace. Don't try to get revenge. Just know that I will execute vengeance. I got your back. Don't get mad at him. Don't get ugly. Start talking dirty. Just understand. Just praise me. I'm coming in on the scene for I inhabit the praises of my people. Say amen to that. Don't worry about another bill. I got your back. Start decreeing what you want and you'll see it manifest in this earth. I'm talking about people who've never seen a miracle before about to see miracles now. If you'll just stand up and decree it. For the word of the king is, there is power. Say amen. Now give God some praise. I'm, I'm, I'm done. Diplomatic immunity. No weapon. I said no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And when this anointing starts working like it's starting right now, you are not going to look like what you've been through. Those relatives that have not seen you for a while say, girl, is that you? Say, yeah, that's me. Ooh, you look good. Why? Not even a smell of smoke. Come on. They don't even know you've been through the fire. They don't know you've been through the flood. But God 
is bringing you out to a wealthy place. We will get to the promised land. Give God a praise and a shout and a thanksgiving because he's bringing you out. Deep within you, there is a call to lead. Distractions have tried to bury it. Criticism has tried to smother it. But the call remains. And now it's time. Become an entrepreneur. God is awakening the call again. Answer it. Take a leap of faith. It's time for you to change the story. Not just for you, but for your neighborhood, your community, your city, your world. At Joseph Business School, we are here to equip you, to guide you, to empower you, to step into the call that God has given you. It's time to launch out. Begin a new story. The call is clear. The time is now. Become an entrepreneur.